So I'm going to do the corresponding textbook uh, problem out of the textbook. So this is from page, let's see what page is it. This is on page 149. So it's on 149 and then number, of course, it's, it's 149 and then, of course, it's number 17. So let's see, what do we got here? Um, they tell us that this is going to be the T distribution, but what if uh, I'm not going to tell you that on a test? So what you have to do is decide that on your own. So let's see what they're telling us. They're telling us here, let me get a highlighter going so we start doing some highlighting. Um, let me just fly that out. No, that's good. So let's see, suppose you want to, you know that for all people, the average average amount of sleep is seven hours. So then we randomly select 50 college students. So that's N. Um, so let's see. N equals 50. And we get a survey, and from the sample, we found that the mean, so that's the sample mean, X bar is 6.2 hours, certainly less than 7. And now, unfortunately, some of you folks on this exam and quiz are going to tell me, yeah, 6.2 is less than 7. It supports, uh, you know, supports whatever. Well, you got to do it statistically. We need an area. We need a probability to do this. Or, or we got to compare it to some critical value. And I'll show you. I'll do both. We'll do both ways here. So... And then we know the sample standard deviation is 0.75 hours. So that's S. So that's a flag that we don't know the population standard deviation. Does this come from the sample? Now, they don't tell us whether the population is normally distributed, but they do. But because we go to such a large sample size, we can apply the t test, the one, one sample t test. So I guess, what's the claim? It's always a good thing to see. I did the condition check to make sure it's okay to do this. Now the claim is, well, so we can just highlight it if we want, or we can write it, let's see. We're gonna test the claim, uh, te test this claim. The claim is that college students get less sleep than all people. So the claim is a college student, college, let's write spell the students. Now it's good, I think it's good to write it out in words. This helps you phrase the answer correctly. I mean, some people just say, say uh, mu is less than seven. Uh, it's okay, but this is better. College students get less on average. Get less sleep. Get less than seven hours of sleep. Which you then can say is less than the rest of us or whatever. Um, I surely don't get seven hours of sleep. So, uh, um, I'm not a college student either. Um, so let's see here. So that's the claim. And then what we want to do is we probably want to write, let's see, can I select everything, move it up? And we probably want to write our two hypotheses. So HO is always, you just got to write the, the parameter you're working with. We're looking for mu, the population mean. And that's equal to the claim that no, college students are not getting less sleep on average here, the same as everybody else. And H1 or HA, depending on what you watch or listen, because they said less than, less than sleep, that makes this a left tail test. Notice that I'm not using the 6.2 yet, right? It's always what the claim is. That's why writing the claim is so important. It helps you make sure you use the right values, okay? And then it's always good to say, oh yeah, this one's the claim. So if my data says I can support or reject HO, then, then that's, that supports the claim. Okay, so we got a left tail test. I'm just trying to compare this to the my open math assignment. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can get a window open. I got it open here somewhere. You can't see it. Uh, yeah, this is a left tail test. So now we got to find the test statistic. Well, to do this by hand, what we got to do is this. So we know x bar is 6.2. We know that the mu we're wondering about that we think is the center of seven. We know that the sample standard deviation is what? 0 0.75. And I know N equals 50. So to get the, so this is a sampling distribution because we're dealing with samples. So the first part of the Z score, uh, sorry, this is the T score, not a Z score. It, it gets calculated the same way. So, I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter except we want to make sure we can use the right distribution. So the T, this is the test statistic. It's a T-score. Uh, so 6.2 minus 7 over, now here's the tricky part, 0.75 over the square root of 50. This is that This is that standard deviation for all the sampling distributions. For, uh, for all, I mean, all of the, it's the standard deviation for all these X bars of all pot, all the samples of size 50. How do those, those uh, how do those, 
how do the sample means vary? So we get that part. I'm going to get, uh, let's see, negative 0 0.8, and then i got to do that calculation down below, and I don't need to do that on screen, do I? Let's see, let me get, can I even do it off screen, because I don't see much of the calculator. Uh, here, let me stop this video for a minute. Just a minute, I just noticed that I made a mistake before I crunched this. I wrote the wrong standard deviation. The standard deviation is 0 0.75. There, that's corrected. And then to do this with my calculator, let's see. So once I got that correction going, let's see here. Let me get a pointer going. Once I got that correction going and, and typed, got the, net, the 0 0.75 divided by the square root of 50, that's what I got for a, a, a standard deviation for the sampling distribution, the one we got to use for this. I'll abbreviate to, to that, but I just grabbed it on my calculator. And that tells me a T-score test statistic of negative 7.54. Two decimal places usually enough, so mm, that's a pretty pretty small. I mean, it's a very negative uh, test statistic. But you know, let's let's walk through uh, let's walk through what the web assigns asking you to do. Then they're asking you to find a critical value of t for this. So we're going to compare it to a you're doing the classical way of doing these significance tests. So let me come over to the next page and I'll show you how to do that. So we've got a, a left-tailed test, a one-tailed test. We also know that we're trying to, so, so what we're trying to do is figure out the critical value of t. In other words, if we get the mean in the middle and we're looking for a left-tailed test, we want to find what t-score cuts off that bottom 0.01 probability. So what we're going to do is going to go to the 0.01 column here. Let me get a highlighter going. So the 0.01 column. And then we come down to 49 degrees of freedom, right? We had n equals 50, so to comp degrees of freedom, it's n minus 1. I hope if you, on your table in the book, if you print mine, you print my copy, go n minus 1 over there. So we're going to go to um, 49 degrees of freedom and over to this column. And then we're going to look at the intersection of those. And our critical value is 2.45. In this case, it's going to be negative. So the critical value of t is actually going to be negative. Uh, let me get another pointer. Negative 2.405. Okay, so that's the critical value of t. That's what we're going to compare. Negative 2. Let's go ahead and make a decision now because that's the last part of web assign. You know, make make a make a data, make a decision about this data. So read the alternative hypothesis weighs H H1. You remember how I wrote claim next to H1? This is why I did it. So we reject the null hypothesis, which we did. So the data supports the claim that on average college students get less than seven hours of sleep or or less get less sleep than the general population. Okay, so that, that's how you deal with that. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, there's some other things we can do with this, finding a P, I mean, this is how this problem was asking us to do this, but in general, we could just use find a P-value and uh, find the test statistic in P-value, and the slick way to do that is to use that Rossman chance calculator. So here's the results for that Rossman chance calculator. In case you're having a hard time running it, let me point out some ways, some things I did to make this happen. So... I had to select one mean because this is a one sample t-test, right? I had to fill in the numbers, the sample size, the mean, the sample standard deviation. See how it even says S? This isn't the one we had to calculate. This calculator does it for us. We have to select test of significance. We have to type in what HO and H1 was. And you click the way you change left-tailed, right-tailed. People have had a problem with this before. You just click on that button and that goes from 
less than, greater than, or not equal to. So you're going to make that change. Then you click Calculate, and notice what it gives us. There's our, there's the z-score we calculated. And of course, we said that this we're going to reject HO, and it's really far away from, from, uh, from, from zero, from seven. Notice that p-value is is zero because we're way more than three standard deviations below the mean. So zero percent chance of happening. We're going to reject HO. So forth. did you see the how I said reject HO? I didn't say we're going to accept H1. That's important. We can never accept. We should never accept the alternative hypothesis. The data just tells us whether we can we can reject the null hypothesis or not. Is that center? Is that center the true center? And if it's far enough away, we can say no. That and that's what's actually that's what's coming up on thinking about this uh, with the election tomorrow. Tomorrow is I'm doing this on Monday night. Um, uh, June, oh, not June, <laughs> November 6th, right? Or is it the 7th? Uh, but today's November 7th, the election's tomorrow. And you see on all the polls, the exit polls, they're saying it's within the margin of error. Well, that means it's not statistically significant. It's not It's not in the rejection region. The p-value is bigger than 0.01 and 0 0.05, 0 0.05 or whatever they tell us. Okay? There's other, there's other calculators that you can find and use if you prefer those. Your graphing calculator does a nice uh, uh, t-test. Um, same, same way, same usage. So, okay, I think I've done what you need for WebAssign. I've probably given you more than you need. Uh, hopefully this helps.